Good morning. It's Sunday, Sunday, September 13th, 2020. And I'm Pastor John Powell from the Parkview Presbyterian Church in Oak Park, Illinois. And I want to say good morning to you. God bless you. It's an interesting time, and I've realized that I need to address an issue in my own life that you probably or may, in fact, be finding very pertinent to your own situation. And it's the issue of frustration or anger. I've got a wonderful neighbor who walked across the street this week, his birthday week, with a loaf of fresh, hot, baked bread, and it was wonderful. And he's, he's really a prince of a guy, Jim Kirby. The, the challenge is that he's got a sign on his front yard for the other side, and I had a sign on my front yard for the other side. And he's a great guy. And I have to remember that as I find myself very frustrated with the evening news. The, the media seems to be editorializing instead of reporting things, and it gets to be kind of obnoxious. I saw a statistic that says that 86% of Americans feel like the network news are editorializing instead of just reporting what's happening. It's Talk about obnoxious and talk about mm, a little on the propaganda side of things. So I came out a couple days ago and someone stole my sign. And I wasn't happy. And then on top of that, they didn't steal my neighbor's sign for the other side of the debate. But he didn't, and that's fine. And I can chuckle now, but I'm finding that certain tensions seem to be cropping up, creeping in. I definitely realized I have not been driving like a Christian. I definitely have been describing various drivers behind me or beside me or in front of me who are going too slow or cut me off or uh, whatever. And my poor wife has just had it up to here. It's just too much. And I realize that I've been a jerk at times, if preachers can be jerks. And since we are human and since we are given to frustrations from season to season or time to time that I have to own up to it. And maybe it's been kind of locked down, forced to be in the house. Summer was great in the backyard, but now it's rainy this week and this weekend. And so, wouldn't you know it, I looked on, I was just passing, and there on the bookshelf, my wife's book was a title, Beyond Anger. And I opened it up because I'm realizing that I need to maybe have a refresher course on what not to do or what to be on guard for. And, well, the introduction talks about the difference between getting angry and being angry. And that there are times when it's very appropriate to get angry. Your kid is running out into the street. You're, you've got a obnoxious salesman or clerk or whatever. There are some times when it's appropriate. I remember years ago when somebody really did some crummy stuff to, to my wife, and I was so shut down, I could not get angry when she needed me to get angry. 
But the being angry, constantly being on edge, snapping, flashing, when we really kind of lose control is not so good. And some of us are more given to those traits than others, I suppose. I guess as a firstborn of four, I was often asked to be in charge. In the first grade, when the teacher had to go to the office, she put me in charge of the class. I mean, there are aspects that can be well, maybe not as healthy or as good as they should have been. And I'm thinking about Romans chapter 12, the middle section where the Apostle Paul talks about so much as it depends upon you, get along with everybody. And there's something about letting God be God in our lives. There's something about the, the, the deep humility that comes from the realization that there but for the grace of God go I, and that there are seasons when we must begin to live in greater gratitude for all the blessings around us, the joy of every morning, which is God's gift. And so my prayer for you in this season is, to let the Lord reveal to you the places where God is still working or needing to work on you, to, to, to soften the rough edges. I love that little sticker I, I have somewhere in all of my things down in the basement that says P B P W M G I. F, W, M, Y. Please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. Romans chapter 12. Wonderful words. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly or sisterly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Pam and I were driving somewhere recently, and oh boy, there were all sorts of drivers, and I kept saying, I'll bet it's an old woman or an old man, and as I passed, I'd check. But you know, I'm not so young anymore myself. And the fact that they need my prayers because they're having a hard time seeing or they're afraid or whatever. And he goes on, never flag and zeal be a glow with the spirit. Serve the Lord. Can I serve the Lord while I'm driving my car? Can I serve the Lord while I'm waiting in the checkout stand for groceries or whatever? And he goes on, rejoice in your hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, practice hospitality. And then the national scene certainly relates to this one. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Reminds me of the quote from Oprah Winfrey that I see on my TV from time to time with my music station. It says, 
never associate with people who won't lift you up. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? There's all sorts of people who need encouragement and love and grace. So if you find yourself frustrated at times, join me in giving that to the Lord so that there's something that he can do in a new way, in a deeper way. And if you find it frustrating to you, Maybe that's the new playing field for your faith. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, that we might become a glory to you and a blessing to others. God help us. Amen. Blessings to you and yours in this amazing time.